Who is Joseph Smith, and what do LDS people believe about him? This is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to share the gospel with them. And we have an announcement at the end of the video, and so stay tuned for that news for pertaining to the future of this channel. And so we're going to be covering material from my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle. And um, we are in a third wave through that book, and we're dealing with the most popular material that we have here on YouTube. And my most popular video year to, or to date is on Mormonism, is the LDS Plan of Salvation. You can go and check it out. And I have several other videos related to Mormonism. But I wanted to get more specific this week on what they believe. Leave. And there's also a playlist that you can go and check out because we've already covered some of these topics uh, before this week. But I wanted to dive into the person of Joseph Smith today. And uh, we're going to be looking at articles and what it says on the LDS official website. We're going to be taking a look at what it says in my uh, in the book Mormon Doctrine by Bruce R. McConkie, who was a former apostle within the Mormon Church. And we're also going to be looking at quotes that come from a plethora of sources that I include in the epilogue to my book uh, about Joseph Smith and how LDS view Joseph Smith. And so here we go. And so from LDS.org, as a young boy in 1820, Joseph Smith wanted to know which church was true. As he searched the Bible for help, he read that he should ask of God. Acting on this counsel, Joseph went into the woods near his home and prayed. Suddenly, a light shone above him, and Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ appeared to him. When Joseph asked which church he should join, the Savior told him to join none of the churches then in existence because they were teaching incorrect doctrines. Through this experience and many others that followed, the Lord chose Joseph to be his prophet and to restore the gospel of Jesus Christ and his church to the earth. As Joseph Smith proved his worthiness, he was given a divine mission as a prophet of God. Through him, the Lord accomplished a great and marvelous work that included bringing forth the Book of Mormon, restoring the priesthood, revealing precious gospel truths, organizing the true church of Jesus Christ, and establishing temple work. On June 27, 1844, Joseph and his brother Hiram were killed in an attack by an armed mob. They sealed their testimonies with their blood. And a little addendum to that, uh, they don't mention that both of them had guns on them at the time and that they both fired shots and actually, I believe, took down a couple of people who were of their attackers. And so I wouldn't necessarily call them martyrs. And uh, the church is not very forthright on that fact, even though you can see the, church, the gun that Joseph Smith had on him under glass at the Church History Museum across from Temple Square in Salt Lake City. That is, if they still have the guts and audacity to show it. But I saw it with my own eyes. So, for a testimony of the restored gospel to be complete, it must include a testimony of Joseph Smith's divine mission. The truthfulness of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rests on the truthfulness of the first vision and the other revelations the Lord gave to the prophet Joseph. I'm wondering which account of the first vision they, uh, they unite themselves uh, under and they get a testimony of. Because if you don't know, there are multiple accounts and the personages that appeared to him, the circumstances surrounding it, and the words that they said to him, uh, the feelings that he had in relation to the event are all different in all the different versions. And so, which version of the first vision do you actually agree with? And do you believe that the God and Father and Jesus Christ appearing to him was the first vision, or do you believe that the angel Moroni appearing to him was the first vision? Because most of the people in the early years of the church believe that that was the first vision account. So, moving on. In the Doctrine and Covenants, we learn Joseph Smith, the prophet seer of the Lord, has done more, save Jesus only, for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. Doctrine and Covenants 135.3 Now, Joseph 
and we may get to this quote a little later on in this video, but Joseph actually claimed himself that he did more than Jesus for the salvation of men because he was the only one who was able to keep a whole church together, that the apostles weren't able to do it, nor was Jesus. Don't know if you're aware of that, but it's in the history of the church, um, which you can find. You can very easily Google that quote, and you can find it uh, very easily. Joseph Smith did, in fact, say that. Now, let's go on to Bruce McConkie's words. Actually, no, we're not done yet. Knowing the truth of Joseph Smith's testimony requires er each earnest seeker of truth to study the record and then exercise sufficient faith in Christ to ask God in sincere, humble prayer whether the record is true. If the seeker asks with the real intent to act upon the answer revealed by the Holy Ghost, the truthfulness of Joseph Smith's vision will be manifest. In this way, every person can know that Joseph Smith spoke honestly when he declared, I had seen a vision, I knew it, and I knew that God knew it, and I could not deny it. Joseph Smith, History 125. Okay, so what does Bruce McConkie have to say? And here's the, the articles that he links to Joseph Smith, Book of Mormon, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Dispensation of the Fullness of Times, Elias, First Vision, Gazalim, Gospel, Mormonism, New and Everlasting Covenant, Prophets, Restoration of the Gospel. In the pr pr providences of Almighty God, and according to the plan before ordained in the councils of eternity, Joseph Smith Jr. was born into mortality December 23, 1805. As a pre-existent spirit, he had ranked with Adam and Abraham. And I just want to say uh, his birthday is on December 23rd, and oftentimes his birthday in the Mormon church overshadows Christmas. And I just need to point that out. He was one of the noble and great ones of whom Abraham wrote. Abraham 3, 22 through 23. A truth which President Joseph F. Smith also saw in a vision, Gospel Doctrine, 4th edition, page 601. In that prior existence, by diligence and obedience, he gained the spiritual stature and capacity which entitled him to be for ordained to stand as the head of the greatest of all gospel dispensations, greater even than the dispensation of Jesus Christ. Teachings, page 365. So great was he his assigned mission with reference to the restitution of all things, Acts 3.21, that holy prophets spoke of him by name thousands of years before his mortal birth, 2 Nephi 3. That's if you believe the Book of Mormon was written before Joseph Smith's time, that is. And as to the mighty work to be started by him, there are many prophecies foretelling it, uh, as there are about it, any other single subject, not even accepting the host of prophetic utterances about our Lord and his redemptive sacrifice. There are just as many, if not more, prophecies about Joseph Smith and what he would do as there are the prophecies about Jesus and what he would do. Did you catch that? In the spring of 1820, when the hour had come for the opening of the final gospel dispensation, young Joseph, then fourteen and a half years of age, beheld in glory the Father and the Son. Thereafter, Moroni visited him. He received, translated, and published the ancient Nephite record. Other messengers came bringing keys, power, priesthood, and authority. Revelations in great number were showed upon him, showered upon him, and by the power and commandment of the Lord Omnipotent, he organized again on earth God's literal kingdom, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Finally, having done all things well, as had been ordained and appointed, he sealed his testimony with his blood, was taken home to that God who gave him breath, and now enthroned in eternal glory. Enthroned in eternal glory. He continues his appointed labors on the Lord's errand. To the church the Lord commanded, Give heed unto all the words and commandments which he shall give unto you, as he receives them, walking in a holiness before me. For his word you shall receive as if from my own mouth, in all patience and faith. Doctrine and Covenants 21, 4 and 5. Joseph Smith's greatness lies in the work that he did, the spiritual capacity he developed, and the witness he bore of the Redeemer. Since the keys of salvation were restored to the prophet, it is in and through and because of his latter-day mission that the full redemptive power of the Lord has again become available to men. It is because the Lord has called Joseph Smith that salvation is again available to mortal men. Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more 
save Jesus only for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. Doctrine and Covenants 135.3. So that's what Bruce McConkie has to say about it. I'm going to turn in my epilogue, my book, How LDS View Joseph Smith. And the inspiration for this chapter came from a speech given by Jason Kunstler at BYU, Idaho, called Millions Shall See Brother Joseph Again. You can look that up. Um, and I have a commentary on the on that video on this channel as well. Um, and it was a talk given in their chapel, and I, I've adapted that. I took some of the things that he quoted and said about Joseph, as well as other quotes that by LDS leaders about jo uh, Joseph Smith. And I wanted to read some of those for you. Joseph Fielding Smith said, "We link the names of Jesus Christ and Joseph Smith." Brigham Young taught. And that is true. I talked to some missionaries that are local here um, not too long ago, and I asked them, what if a person believed everything that Jesus said and taught, but they did not believe anything that Joseph believed or taught? What happens to that person? And they said that you cannot separate Jesus and Joseph. If you do not believe in Joseph Smith, then you cannot believe everything that you need to about Jesus Christ. I want you to take those words and let them soak in. That is what the LDS Church believes. Brigham Young taught, When I have received from the Lord, I have received by Joseph Smith. If I drop him, I must drop these principles. No man on the earth can say Jesus lives and deny at the same time the prophet Joseph. This is my testimony. So you hear it from Brigham Young himself. Exactly what I just said. Bruce McConkie believed the measure of a person's spiritual maturity is found in his or her loyalty to the prophet Joseph Smith. How loyal are we to him? Brigham Young testified, No man or woman in this dispensation will ever enter into the celestial kingdom of God without the consent of Joseph Smith. From the day the priesthood was taken from the earth to the winding up scene of all things, every man and woman must have the certificate of Joseph Smith Jr. as a passport to their entrance into the mansion where God and Christ are. I wish you and you with me. I cannot go there without his consent that he holds the keys of that kingdom for the last dispensation. Cursed are all those that lift up the heel against mine anointed, saith the Lord, and cry, They have sinned when they have not sinned before me, saith the Lord, but have done that which was meet in mine eyes, and which I commanded them. Did you get that the claim to be without sin? Placed upon Joseph Smith. And they who do charge thee with transgression, their hope shall be blasted, and their prospects shall melt away as the hoar frost melted before the burning rays of the rising sun. Joseph Smith declared, I have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward all men. I shall die innocent. Joseph Smith said, I do not the wrongs that I am charged with doing. Brigham Young said, Who can justly say aught or anything against Joseph Smith? I was as well acquainted with him as any man. I do not believe his father and mother knew him any better than I did. I do not think that any man lives on the earth that knew him any better than I did. And I am bold to say, Jesus Christ accepted no better man ever lived or does live upon this earth. I am his witness. Brigham Young said, Who can justly say anything against Joseph Smith? I was as well acquainted with him as any man. I don't... Okay. That was a repeat. Wow. Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more, save Jesus, only for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. Boyd K. Packer said, I know Joseph Smith was his mighty prophet, seer, and revelator, with the exception of Jesus Christ, he is the greatest being who ever walked the face of this earth. Joseph Smith taught, Prophets, priests, and kings have looked forward with joyful anticipation to the day in which we live, and fired with heavenly and joyful anticipations they have sung and written and prophesied of this our day. Joseph Smith said, All saints profit by this important key, that in all your trials, troubles, temptations, afflictions, bonds, to imprisonments and death, see it to it that you do not betray Jesus Christ, that you do not betray the brethren, that you do not betray the revelations of God, whether in the Bible, the Book of Mormon, or Doctrine, the Covenants, and all your kicking and floundering, see to it that you do not this thing, lest any innocent blood be found in your skirts and you go down to hell. Joseph Smith said, You don't know me, you never knew my heart. No man knows my history, I cannot tell it. I shall never undertake it. I never did any harm any man since I was born in the world. 
I never think any evil, nor do anything to the harm of my fellow man. When I am called by the trump of the archangel and weighed in the balance, you will all know me then. I add no more. God bless you all. Brigham Young said, Joseph Smith Jr. will again be on this earth, dictating plans and calling forth his brethren. He will never cease his operations under the directions of the Son of God until the last ones of the children of men are saved that can be from Adam until now. Come on, you prosecutors, you false swearers, all hell boil over you burning mountains. Roll down your lava, for I will come out on the top at last. Here it is. I have more to boast of than ever any man had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. A large majority of the whole have stood by me. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no nor man ever did such a work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints shall never, never ran away from me yet. In case one thinks that this is the teaching of the distant past, please let me share a conversation. Okay. Um, and I talked about that already. So, do you still believe that they believe that jo Joseph Smith is just a prophet and nothing more? I leave that to you. If there's any insights or questions that you have that I did not cover related to this or any video related to the quotes, please put, share that down in the comments below. I'll be choosing some of those for the weekly Q&A at the end of the week. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you like the content for today and share this video with others who are in your lives who are interested in cults and how to share the gospel with them. And the announcement that I talked about has to deal with the study through the Bible content on this channel. I am moving it over to another channel from this point forward. And that channel is already live and active. I'm going to put links in the descriptions uh, and in the cards and in the end screen of this video. And so you can link onto any one of those. And if you like the content going through the Bible on this channel, then it's going to be on that channel. So subscribe over on that channel. And then that frees this channel up to just be specific to the material related to cults and how to share the gospel with them. And so if you like that content, then stay here. If you like this content and the Bible content, then subscribe to both channels. And so until next time, may God's grace be with you.